Giga Shipyard is being built in Russia for the production of ships made from reinforced concrete. Yes, you heard right, it will be real floating ships made of concrete. Can reinforced concrete float? And why does Russia need this? Let's have a quick look at that. For all of us, things like ship made of concrete sounds a bit like a spike made of paper, or firewood made of ice. And yet, concrete ships do exist. Of course, nowadays you can meet the very few of these big boys, but 100 years ago, reinforced concrete ships were produced by all that time leading maritime countries, like United States, Great Britain, Holland, France, Norway, Sweden, Italy, and Germany. Peak of building concrete ships comes from First World War. The main advantages are the price and the construction. After all, concrete is much cheaper than a high-quality ship steel and resistance to explosions. In this case, a concrete barge is capable of withstanding an explosion of 100 kilos of dynamite directly under the bottom, while steel structures cannot handle it. At the beginning of 20th century, over 1,000 reinforced concrete ships were built. The average such ship had a displacement of 6,000 tons. Basically, these were cargo ships, ferries, bars, tugs, and others. For military purposes, a concrete ship is just too heavy and too slow. The main question in this story is, why concrete ship doesn't sink? The answer is very simple. Thanks to all the same strength of Archimedes, which makes any other ships float. The density of reinforced concrete is actually three times lower than that of steel. One cubic meter of steel weighs almost eight tons, while the same volume of reinforced concrete structures will stretch by only two and a half tons. Of course, when building a ship from concrete, the side wall will have to be made much thicker than one of of steel. Nevertheless, floating concrete has its own very unique purpose and a right to exist. The last time the mass production of concrete ships took place in post-war Germany, when 50 concrete barges were made, and in the USSR, which was actually stamping concrete watercraft at several shipyards at the same time, and now a completely new shipyard is being built in modern-day Russia, which will also be engaged in concrete ship building. CSKMS, Center for Construction of Large Tonnage Maritime Structures, the construction site is deployed in Kalski Peninsula, not far from Murmansk, in the Belokamenka village, which is located on the shores of Kalski Bay and has a direct access to the Barren Sea that you can see in the picture. The estimated cost of the project is 120 billion rubles. It became a tradition now that we measure all construction sites with the Crimea carriage bridge, so the cost of the new shipyard is about a half of the cost of the bridge to Crimea. What is that all for? The fact that CSKMS will build more than just floating concrete barges. These will be entire factories working in the production and condensation of natural gas in the Arctic. Just imagine, shipyard assembles a floating concrete plant. This plant is towed to the desired point in the Arctic Ocean. Then, it's attached to the bottom and begins to extract natural gas with subsequent conversion into LNG, transferring the finished product to tankers. The new shipyard is not just shipyard. This is a whole conveyor belt for manufacture of floating LNG plants. The size of these future factories is staggering. Gross weight of 600,000 tons. This is 6 times more than an aircraft carrier and 12 times more than a Titanic. For the manufacture of such huge structures, CSKM will have to do dry docks, the largest in Russia, with a dimensions each 400 by 175 meters, which is the size of 14 football fields. It is planned to build several dozen LNG plants in this particular area, where three plants consisting of Giga Shipyard will be built there at the same time. With 10,000 builders now, it is planned to have 15,000 people working this site, which makes it construction site of the century. The best thing about this project is that it's out of media spot. Information has literally to be collected bit by bit. It is obvious we need to talk about such grandiose production projects, talk about them at every corner. There is absolutely no doubt that Russia will become a number one country in the Arctic, with all that development of infrastructure ongoing and much, much more planned. Well, stakes are high and the outcome is just too easy to guess. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell.